in this video, I'm going to be talking about the eight queens problem. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about an idea called backtracking. Okay, so to start off, what we need to do is understand the problem. So the problem is as such. Given an 8x8 chessboard, find all possible configurations of placing eight queens so that they do not attack each other. So a queen can attack another queen if it is in the same row or in the same column or in the same diagonal. And we're going to look exactly what does this mean. But once again, we're given an 8x8 chessboard and we just want to find a configuration of eight queens. We put them on the board somewhere so that none of them attack each other. Okay, so here you can see that this is a configuration that is valid. And in this configuration, we can see that we have placed eight queens on the chessboard and that none of them attack each other. And to show that they none, none of them attack each other, I'm going to be drawing the directions in which each one of them can move. So we're going to start off at the top. And at the top, you can see that he doesn't or she doesn't really hit anything, right? Uh, you can see in the same row, it's not hitting anything. In the same column, it's not hitting anything. And along the diagonals, right, and left, we can see that it's not hitting anything. Subsequently, for the next queen on the second row, it's not hitting, hitting anything on its same row. It's not hitting anything in the same column. And if we look at the diagonals, uh, the queen is not hitting anything. For the third queen, we can see that along the rows, along the columns and diagonals, it's not hitting anything. And so this basically continues on for all eight of the queens. So you can check this for all eight of the queens in the current configuration that I have on the screen. But you can see that none of them are going to be attacking each other. So how exactly do we do this? And how do we use something called backtracking to solve this for us? Well, the idea is that we do a complete search. And what we should notice first is that on each row, there is going to be at most one queen. And that makes sense because if we put two queens on the same row, then that means they would automatically be attacking each other. So since we have to put one queen on one row, that would basically mean that we should go row by row. And for each of the rows, we should check where we can put a queen such that all queens before it do not attack it. So you go on a row, you try to place a queen on all eight of the um, columns in that row. And what you're going to do is you're going to check for every single queen. Is it intersecting with it? And so once we put a queen down, we continue searching but make sure to remove the queen that we just put down once we are done. And I'm going to show you exactly what we mean by that when we code it up. But here is pretty much an example. So right here, I have a blank chessboard, and I'm going to denote a star as a queen. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down our first queen. And when we put this first queen down, what we're going to ask ourselves is, does this work? And the answer in this case is that if you look along the rows, the columns, and all its diagonals, you can see that, yes, it actually does work. Next, we're going to be putting down the next queen. We're going to start at the next row. The reason we start at the next row is simply because we don't want it to intersect with the queen at the top, right? Any queen before it, if we put it on the next row, that would basically just mean that it's not going to uh, automatically intersect, but otherwise we still need to check whether or not it's going to intersect with anything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves, does this work? Well, obviously in this case, no, it doesn't work. So what we're going to do is continue on. And the reason it, this doesn't work is because it's in the same column as the one right above it. We're going to ask ourselves, does this configuration work right here? And we basically just go through that row and check every single square, right, every single tile, and see if that works. So does this work? Well, no, it doesn't, so continue on. So by continuing, our star becomes, or our queen goes to this position. We ask ourselves, does this work? And yes, this does work. 
then we're going to start on the next row. And in this next row, we're going to start off on the left column. We ask ourselves, does this work? In this case, no, it doesn't work. So continue on. Does this configuration work right here? No, it doesn't. Continue on. Does this one work? No, it doesn't. Continue on. Does this work? No, it doesn't. So we continue on. And then finally, for this position, does this work? Yes, it actually works. So we can go to the next row now. And essentially, this continues on for the rest of all eight of the queens. Now, for the specific implementation details, we're going to be looking at what I mean previously by remove the queen once you're done with the entire path of it. But for now, just understand that we're just going to go through each row. And for each row, we'll go through each of the tiles, see where we can put it so that it is a valid position. All right, so let's code it up. Okay, so now to code it up, essentially what we need to do is understand the input. So the input is simply uh, an integer n. And at first, what we're going to do is we're just going to set n is equal to 8. The reason we're doing n is equal to 8 is because just for the specific type of problem that we're looking at, the 8 queen problem. Obviously, this question could extend if this if we work out the solution with modul modularity. Uh, it can extend to any amount of input for n by n. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a board. And this board is going to be of type integer, and it's going to be of a 2D array. Now, the reason we make a 2D integer array is because it's either going to be a 1 or a 0 at each of the indices, a 1 representing a queen, a 0 representing an empty space. So create it by n by n. And what I'm going to do later on is create a function called place n queens. And we're going to specify the number of queens that we have. So we have n and the starting row that we're going to be looking at, so 0. Okay, so now let's quickly type up the place queen n queens function. So it's going to be of type void because we're not returning anything, but we're going to be printing stuff out to the console. So it's going to be called place n queens, and it's going to take in two parameters. Number one, the number of total queens that we have, and number two, the current row that we're looking at. Now, one cool thing that you should notice is that we're using a zero indexed array and specifically we're starting at the zeroth row for our first queen so the last row that's valid to place something down is n minus one but eventually if we reach row n that means that we're finished that current configuration so we're done placing all n of our queens and so if we're done printing or if we're done placing all n of our queens we can simply print the current configuration of our board. So it's an n by n board. We print out each of the values. And it's going to be binary of ones and zeros. Print a new line so that you print the row, then you print a new line so you go to the next line. After this, return so that we no longer, you know, exit or we pretty much exit this function here. Now, before that, what I want to do is I actually want to print something just a little, you know, fancy that'll make it so that we can read each of the boards more clearly. And it's just going to be something like this so that it divides each of the boards uh, by some slash like this. I might even include some new line characters in there so that's even more readable. Now, otherwise, if we're not on the nth row, what I want to do is I want to say, for the current row, try all configurations of placing down a queen. So how do we do that? Well, we know that there's going to be n columns in the current row, right, because it's an n by n array. And basically, if we want to create a function to check whether or not it's possible to put it in the current configuration. So what I'm going to say is, is possible for n row and i. So what does this mean? We have n queens on the current row in the ith column. Is it possible to put a queen on the 
row rowth, this row here, and the ith column. And if it is possible, set row i in the board array to be equal to one. And then basically what we do from there is the recursive recurrence. So we say place n queens. We still have n queens. So the to this is the total number of queens that we have. So we have total n. But now because we just placed down a queen on the row rowth or the rowth row, we move on to the next row now. So that's going to be row plus one. Now, because this is recursion, it's going to go down all the way down to the tree, all the way to the end, and then work its way up, right? So if we do that, what we need to do is make space for other configurations of queens on the current row, right? We just put down something on the ith column of the current row, but what happens if other columns are valid for the current row? So then what we need to do is we need to say, board row i is equal to zero because we need to reset it almost. Okay, so that's pretty much that. All we need to do last is create this is possible function, which is going to be a boolean value that checks whether or not we can put a queen on the rowth row and the ith column. So static boolean is possible. The total number of queens we have, n, the row, the current column. And what we need to do first, okay, so we know that no queens are on the same row, so we don't need to check for the current row, but we need to check for the current column. Are there any queens in the same column as the current one? And that's a pretty easy check. We go through each of the rows, and if board, I, call, so we're fixing the column, but we're going through each of the rows. And if there's a one, then what we want to say is return false. Next, what we want to do is we want to check the upper or the left diagonal pretty much. So the way we can do that is we just write a for loop starting at row minus one, j is equal to column minus one. So we start at minus one minus one because we know the current row column, we're trying to put a queen, right? So i is greater than or equal to zero, and j is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus, j minus minus. Now if board i j is equal to a one, return false. So this is one of the diagonals, right? We're gonna work on the next diagonal, the upper right diagonal. So start at row minus one, column, oops, and column, plus one. Go to zero for i, and we want to work our way to n for j. We want to go i minus minus, j plus plus, and basically if board i j is equal to one, then basically return false, because there's a queen in the way. Otherwise, if it passes all three of these conditions, we can pretty much return true that it is a safe place to put one of the queens. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the eight queen problem, which can obviously be extended to n queens. So if I run this code right here, we can see all possible configurations of the queens. So you can see there's a queen here, a queen here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now, what exactly is the time complexity of this program? Well, it's hard to analyze at first, but what you should realize is that this is an n factorial uh, program because essentially what we want to do is for each one of these, we need to go through one times two times three all the way to n uh, possible configurations almost. So in this video, you learned about the n queen problem and how to use backtracking to solve a complete search problem.